All right, peeps. Uh, update. On the bench, the Strat Acoustic. Uh, it's seen better days. We've been a lot of work on this sucker. Uh, kind of temporarily half finished, back and forth. So what happened was... Well, it's kind of hard to see inside there, but you can maybe see through the sound hole. I got a little shim. Uh, let me grab this straight edge here. Let's see if I'm being a horrible cameraman. Probably. Okay, so. Sander in the way. You can see. Not too bad. I don't know if you can see that. At the worst angle, but the straight edge, there was a hump. They call it the belly bulge. In the back, I pushed it in. I even got a clamp mark. You see that? It didn't really break the poly or the black, but the whole support beam came out. This sits under here, and I think all the steaming. I got my steamer over here, the shark steamer. All right, and then... Uh, Man, it gets it hot, and that cyanoacrylate glue pretty much dissolves with the heat and the steam. So I probably overdid it, and I ended up gluing back. There's an X under here, so I glued back this side. I got a shim in the middle, and so that pretty much fixed the hump or the dip here. Uh, yeah, we're looking pretty good. It's not perfect. And some of the shims I was pumping up the body, bending the body around. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend the steam too much. Uh, after all, I think the ghetto hack that I found the best was the shims, right? So take in little pieces of wood um, about the length. I, I was experimenting. I was trying to get some here. You can see little dowels. And I was trying to pump up the bridge. I still might. This might be a leg for this bridge uh, to support it. And then it'll be pushing down into the body, which is plastic on this acoustic strat. Um, I recrowned the frats by hand. <laughs> Did that take a heck of a long time? Yeah. I got a little diamond file uh, and I shaved the diamonds off of one edge. So it doesn't damage the fretboard too bad, but it kind of still does, and I need tape. And then it was weird. I don't know how I found this file found me. Uh, just like a metal steel file, but the one edge, and I should clean it up a little. Yeah, I, would, I definitely should clean it up. Um, you can see both the top and the bottom. Well, I guess the corners of the top and the bottom have a little bit of... Uh, but look, it's even curved to meet the radius, right? This Strat Acoustic radius, I think, is a little flatter than my Strats. But I don't know. This might be a dressing file. How did it find me? Who knows? Uh, it's weird how the universe, I just think of things, they start to manifest. I got, I'm halfway in between doing finish stuff because as I'm working, I'm messing up the finish. And then I'm uh, experimenting, cleaning, and buffing out the poly and scratches and stuff like that. Um which usually you can get through if you got like, I'm using like 2,000, 5,000 sandpaper and then the polishing compound gets the fine stuff out. I went automated today. I got a polishing wheel. I got the drills all in the house. All right, so I'm going to leave the bridge support, whatever that thing is, truss rod, <laughs> truss support, uh, support beam. I'm going to leave it out for now. You can see I re-slotted the bridge. Okay, I sanded it back. I had temporarily painted it brown. Now I found my brown dye. The dye might seep in a little deeper. Hopefully this wood putty is gonna uh, accept the dye pretty well. You can see I just sealed off. Hopefully you can see. You can see I just sealed off uh, the first bridge pinhole too close to the new slotted bridge. Um, not bad, kind of functional, but too much pressure. It was kind of pulling out, and then it was pulling the bridge into an angle forward. I not, was not happy about that. Now I got it straight, uh, actually kind of angled back a little, which if the body starts to bend again, it'll accommodate for that. We had the intonation from the 12th fret 
uh, last known was pretty good. Um, but the nut was kind of weird. We did a little compensation on this baby nut and it seemed to help a little, but like when you start fretting first, second, third, fourth fret, way out of tune. Around the fifth, start coming back into tune and then good all the way. So crowning with a single file, pain in the ass, takes forever, right? But I had to, I was getting buzz and then all the different bridges and saddles or saddles, not bridges. I didn't take the bridge off, never changed the bridge. But uh, all the amalgamations of where this guitar was and is. Anyway, uh, we got a bone nut. So I'm probably going to yank this nut and take it out. But I was trying to comp compensate on the plastic. And it did seem to make a little bit of a difference. Um, from my knowledge, what I could tell, if it's going way out when you start fretting, it is a good chance it's the nut. So I got a brand new bone blank. Uh, I'm not clueless now as to how to compensate. There's a lot more videos I might be watching today on some nut compensation. We might be getting into that. We did the drill and fill. Oh, well, no, we did the fill. Now we got to do the drill, right? So there's a bridge plate under there. I don't want to miss that. It looked like there's plenty of room. I got this little mirror. Here's my... It's real nut which I'm not thrilled about, bone rather. I had the uh, Tusk, which is synthetic. I like that. And it sounds good. I got me a nice, yeah, here's the Tusk bridge. Check it out. Hopefully you guys are seeing this, I don't know. There it is, I know you can see that. You can see me, there's Bob Marley. All right, but a little Tusky, little Tusk bridge. I mean, a Tusk saddle from the bridge. It's compensated already, so it's got some angles in it, which I don't know. Good, bad, and different, kind of general. But generally speaking, yeah, we're pretty good. I got the piezo pickup in there, it's been taking a beating, right? I got wood filler, cyanoacrylate, all kinds of stuff. I've been grinding on it. Poor thing, it's uh, basically just a silver wire. I've been, yeah, I probably should have took it out, right? But steaming it <laughs> so i haven't tested it after all the abuse we'll see if it still works but you can see the the tusk saddle is a pretty tight fit yeah there it goes it dropped in there's you know i've been monkeying around so i'm not sure if it's really going all the way in and seating I guess that's in there. So you can see it doesn't rock forward now, not really. Less than a millimeter. If anything, I'm bending the saddle when I push it. So it's pretty good. I mean, it looks visually, I could see a little bit of play in there. I guess I could, you know, play cyanoacrylate glue build up again. I might play with some of the gels. I haven't opened the gel stuff yet, but it sets slower and probably better for that kind of thing, like build ups. Um, I've been doing the fast stuff and then just dropping a little like sawdust slash baking powder, baking soda. What is it? Baking soda. So yeah, I think I did mess up the perfect fit and it looks like I really grinded too much on the copper on the piezo. So who knows if it's still going to work. <laughs> But people aren't too big on piezos anyway. And I was thinking about dropping a real humbucker on this biatch. There's the wood block right here. And so I could probably put a humbucker right there. Nice little bridge hummy. I'd be chilling. Yeah. If I drill right in through the, the body right here, I'm going into that block. So I really have a good quarter inch, almost a half inch. Right? Especially if I shave a little off of the fretboard instead of round it I can make it square if I wanted to to make room for the humbucker yeah oh ooh, I could go all the way back there pretty good could put a thin rail oh so it already is kind of an acoustic electric hybrid but it's still just an acoustic with a piezo um a thin line I guess and then what makes it electric I don't know how is it really hybrid not 
so much. Right, it's just that it plugs in, it has the jack. That's why I got it convenient. I go right into a PA and a gig. Uh, yeah. Boom, bam, bickety bickety bop. All right, so the bridge seems to be going in there perfect. We're good. What did I not touch on? What else do we need to do? I'm going to oil the fretboard. I got some, what do you call, boiled linseed oil. You can see it's a little dry. I sanded it to 2,000, wet sanded. It's pretty smooth. And the frets too, wet sanded, 2,000. Definitely feeling pretty smooth. Beautiful fret ends. It had, this is an old played out guitar. Um, I don't know how relic it is. I guess it's getting relic now. I'm putting a lot of age on it. But, you know, it was out. The intonation was bad. I got the zebra stripe in the back. It's a nice neck. Um... It does feel sanded. I'm pretty sure I got like a 1500 and it still keeps like a, a satin shine on there. So I never really removed all the satin finish. Uh, but it plays real good. You know, it's not like the poly where it gets really sticky or has that kind of a feel. It feels like my Strat where it's down to the wood. Um, and then I'll do Butcher's Bowling Alley Wax. Uh, bowling alley wax on the back of the neck, neck typically. So yeah, that could be given at the sheen too. Um, I might even put some on the fretboard. I don't think I'm going to do that again. We're going to go boil linseed oil. Yeah, because as I was sanding it, it was kind of coming up. You could see it's still some residue. I mean, I guess it's nice. I might even have been trying to poly it. I have some poly acrylic. I don't think that's the best way to go. Um, I did it on the Alvarez. looks pretty sweet. But the polyacrylic doesn't wear too well, and uh, it's not like solid, right? So it feels like it'll wear out. Um, but yeah, if you can see in there, I went nuts on some of these fret ends. They look like diamonds, never mind rounded. <laughs> As you get up to the top, it's a little messy. But uh, yeah, I was pushing down, right? You get. The bulge in the back and the dip in the front. And so then the, the bridge kind of comes forward. Now you can see I push down in the back, even though it's just the body. But if I take the straight edge, there's a huge dip. Right? I kind of messed up the guitar. Um, you know, I knocked the support out. Now there's a dip in the body. But I imagine as the strings are on, the tension will pull the body back up maybe. And uh, after a while, right, the belly bulge might not come back but come back to level and um you know the intonation was okay even before i uh well once i reslotted it the intonation was okay but it doesn't really need to do much in terms of uh right the last bit of shimming and and stuff but yeah that might help some too if it overcompensates then i'm gonna be flat now <laughs> so yeah we're looking pretty good here um, I'll keep you guys updated. Strat Acoustic, I see them on line three, four hundred bucks. Probably have the same problem. Oh yeah, I had shimmed the neck. What else I do this bad boy? <laughs> I changed the one tuner that was broke. And that's it. I'm going to redrill this uh, bridge pin. It should be pretty good. If I get the nut going, I think we could have perfect intonation. So that's the goal. Get this sucker real playable. Uh, the finish is still good. If I damage the finish beyond repair with the black, I'll scrape it down in the wood and I'll, I don't know, I'll do a burst on it or I'll put a veneer. Yeah, flaming maple top veneer and just glue that bitch on top. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> we'll make it orange or green or blue something cool all right people 14 minutes so oh yeah i wanted to say right i had learned i seen the ghetto hack where you put a bunch of screws and then like bungee to pull the bridge back and steam it so i was trying that didn't happen immediately right no good um but the similar was to steam it and then put a shim under it turns out, yeah, the support beams had broken loose. So they had to be re-glued. So now I shim them. I'm going to leave the shims in there. I, I crazy glue them in there. So they're in there. And they're supporting. Uh, it probably won't affect the sound of the guitar. It'll be okay. Uh, they're kind of like little baffles. No big deal. Um, 
Yeah, so pulling on the bridge, I mean, that might work. What do they sell? They sell the doctor thingy. I don't know about that. And then they sell, which is probably just like a wooden expander. And then they also sell at Stu Mac. They got the aluminum plates. So I went and bought some aluminum yesterday. I was thinking I was going to pop the bridge, put some aluminum plates and heat them up. One's concave, one's convex. It's 140 bucks for those bad boys. So the guitar is probably not, you know, I don't know. I've been putting so much time and days into this guitar. It's not worth the time and the money and the effort and the investment. So I'm trying to keep the investment low. Even though I do have some money, uh, I could definitely go buy the $140 tool. I just wanted to see if I could get away with, with not using it. And in my case, I think uh, the support beams collapsing was a big part of the problem. Not so much just the, the bent wood under the bridge. Why do I think that? The bridge itself didn't come up too much. A little bit, I was sticking paper under it, like it was starting to come up, and I glued it back down. I think it's okay. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to put some lighter strings. I had hybrid nines, uh, which is like a 10 in the bass. You know, so not heavy for an acoustic, but, you know, on this old gal, I think we're going to do just plain nines. I have eights. I don't know. I want more sound on this. So we'll try the nines and uh, see how it goes. And what? We're going to boil linseed, put some new strings. We're going to drill a new bridge pin. And then the nut. Ugh, we got a lot to do. All right. I'll give you guys an update on the next video. Until then, if it happens to you, I would suggest probably get those Stumac plates if you want to fix belly bulge. Especially if you got more than one guitar. I got my Alvarez to do next. So, I'm probably going to buy those plates. I didn't really check into the belly bulge situation on that one too much. And I haven't looked inside. So, I don't know the support beam status. Um, but, yeah, I love that guy at Stu Mac, the little old dude. He, they really seem like they know what they're doing. And, uh... You know, they ain't messing around. In fact, they had an hour-long video of the guy who developed, uh, I don't know if he's from Kiesel or whatever, but he developed, he was talking for a really expensive, to fix expensive Martin. Some of these guitars are going for 30, 40 Gs now. So on that guitar, it's worth it, right? And then that seems to be the way uh, to get the fix. Because if you got a hump under the bridge, you can't even glue the bridge back on properly. You're going to have to straighten that. Um, and then the bridge plate itself underneath. I could see I have wooden. I don't know if they do metal bridge plates. Um, probably mostly wood. I don't know why they don't do metal. I don't know why they don't do a whole metal plate. More metal. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll be the guy doing it with aluminum. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, I had the idea because the hybrid acoustic electric idea has been around for a while. And, you know, to use it as a busker or on stage live, it's cool. I mean, this is a great little practice guitar. Pick it up. It's always ready to go. You know, I got the acoustic sound. I could put on a show for a friend who walks in, right? I could light the room acoustically. Uh, yeah, does it sound like my Alvarez? No. Does it sound a little thinny and tinny compared to it? Yes. But I could light the fucking room. It'll ring. It'll ring out like an acoustic, right? Where an electric, even a hollow body or whatever, semi-hollow, you're not going to get that kind of volume. So it's like acoustic volume. And man, through the piezo, through a PA... EQs and an amp, bam, boom, bam. I mean, distortion the whole nine, right? So with the piezo, you could play distortion. So it is kind of a hybrid acoustic electric. And then the action is really low, right? You get about a millimeter lower on this because it's a bolt-on neck. Most acoustics are not going to be bolt-on neck. That's the hybridity. Hybridity? <laughs> anyway, there you go, the hybridness. So the bolt-on neck. And so I imagine I could just take the snack and put it on my Strat or my uh, Squire. Now I got a Squire. So if I destroy this body, I could always have this as a backup neck uh, bolt on. And it's pretty cool. I mean, I had the action super low. It started to buzz. And then I had to bring it back up. So fine tuning and tweaking it. I think we're going to have the action probably around two mils. It's going to be super low. It's going to be like butter. But I don't care. This was always my high action guitar. I thought this would be like my slide guitar. Now I'm thinking, hey, you know, whatever. I'm honing my repair and tech skills. And 
you know, it's making me a better guitarist, making me more knowledgeable in every way. I feel like uh, I'm getting to the next level, like I'm earning it. It sucks that I haven't been practicing and spending like three months of screwing with these guitars. Real, real wasted time, but I kind of have fun. I enjoy fixing things and, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be happy when it plays like a million dollars. You know, I'm stoked that the intonation much better. Right at the 12th fret, it was way out. Now it's back at the 12th fret. So at least from the 12th fret up, it's kind of in. And then it's super weird. The first four frets are way out. It's got to be the nut. So we'll see. Uh, and then I had fried those strings, you know, testing the intonation in different setups a million times. Those strings got fried. So now I'll put new strings. I'll be able to get a better read on the intonation. And I'm using that Boss Tuner. The download app for the phone, pretty accurate. Uh, between that and a couple of my uh, cheaper clip-ons, a Delta Lab clip-on. I mean, I don't know. I can tell what's going on. I almost bought one of those Peterson strobes, but uh, I don't know. I've been able to save my money. So, right, I've been making more tools instead of buying tools. And I bought some aluminum yesterday to clip it and uh, try to make some of them stew mac clamp jammies myself. Uh, what is it called? The Belly Bulge Reducer. And uh, 140 bucks. So we'll see. Uh, might be a good investment, but I don't think I needed it for this. You might not need it for your guitar. Um, so in summary, a little steam. And I mean a little. I overdid it. I think easy to overdo it. And that's why all everything starts coming loose. I might have had just one support beam loose. And then <laughs> when I started steaming and shimming, uh, I think I might have knocked some others loose. So now it's like a wreck, you know, you make it worse, you make it better. I got more things, you know, you fix one problem, you create three more. Uh, <laughs> lots of fun, but I'm learning. So I would say don't try to crank the bridge back and pull it back against the string tension. I would say shim it up, man. Heat it up a little bit, you know, 30 seconds of steam, and then just slam it in there. This is a good solid plastic body, and I can feel a little give, but it's good pretty much support. I mean, I'm shimming hard against this binding, right? Like, I don't know how easy it is to pop the top. It might just pop up, pop off. And I'm still at the stage where I never popped a lid on an acoustic. Maybe I should. It would have been a lot easier than trying to go through the sound hole and fix it. And maybe I should to fix that last support. So that'll be the next level, the next plateau. Um, you know, and it'll probably come off really easy, right? And then I just got to re-glue the, the plastic binding back on. Uh, easy peasy, pop the top. I'll be able to fix it nice, perfectly. See what's going on. That's the real way to do it. And then, uh, <coughs> who knows? I might have to re-pop the bridge off. Maybe level it with that tool. And fix it the right way. And... We're going to save this freaking Strat Acoustic. Even though it was made in China, all right? Don't hate people. <laughs> all right, 23 minutes. Update on how to fix uh, and maintain your guitars. You know, it, it it's kind of like not for everyone. I think most people are probably better off spending time. My nephew don't even want to even turn his own truss rod. I, that's how I was a few months ago. Now, on this thing, man, in a, in a matter of 15 minutes, I might change the saddle and then go completely one way with the truss rod and then put a different saddle and go completely the other way with the truss rod. So it, it's a matter of, you know, tweaking the neck, um, the neck angle, the bridge, the saddle height, the nut, right? All that together. Um, I don't know if this thing ever came out of the factory even perfectly in tune. It might have had some intonation problems from the get. It's not like I checked it. Um, it sounded good to my ear. I never noticed it. You know, what I noticed was the action was kind of getting high and higher. And then, yeah, I think I did start noticing the intonation past the 12th fret. And then I started checking it and it was out. So, um, there's still some frets. Uh, I got a good crown on this. That might have been part of the problem, too, why I was getting... It was buzzing, so I leveled them down, right? But then there was no crown. And I don't have really a crowning file. I think that's a good investment, the $80 crowning file from uh, Fret Gurus or whatever. I don't want to get me that because that's a friggin' nightmare. That'll take me days trying to put a crown on. And then, yeah... Lots of fun, but I've got lots of experience in the last few months, and 
Uh, feels pretty good. I think this is going to be a great playing guitar. We'll do, we'll film something. I'm working on a new Grateful Dead song. Uh, I already put it up, I think. Uh, what was the song? Bird song. All right. So maybe we'll be doing bird song or some other new tunes uh, coming at you soon. And I was thinking a good name for the channel could be like Guitar Guys. Uh, let me know your comments down below. Give me the feedback. Uh, if you're appreciating these videos, they seem to get way more views than me playing and singing. Nobody gives a crap about that. So, you know, I enjoy fixing these guitars and we might even get some more projects in here. Right now, this Squire, I just bought the brand new Squire. Sounds great. But the bridge pickup, which I love, the single coil, it's got the raised, uh, you know, Al Nico magnets, the, uh, what do they call those? The dominoes? Uh, the slugs. Yeah, the slugs. So they're beveled, like some are high, some are low, right? And they stick way out above the plastic, <coughs> which is kind of a cool look. I don't know if it's vintage or modern or whatever, but I looked at it and I was like, oh, I like that. It sounds freaking great. But on that bridge pickup, the high E, man, that slug is almost touching the string. It's right close in. It's not really too bad. I got to check it and see how the sound is. Maybe I could lower it, but uh, I'm hitting it with my pick. That seems to be the spot where I'm always picking. And it, it annoys me. It's catching, you know, I'm feeling something down there. So I might have to chop that little sucker or change the pickup. I could probably get even better sound. I mean, there's a cheap pickup. So... We'll see, uh, I'll let you know on the <laughs> on the bench next. Well, I haven't even, the bass came out of the case, the fretless 74P bass, um, still got string tension. The strings haven't rusted over, so we probably could keep those strings. Um, that probably last forever. We got the Vantage, Korean, um, nylon string, beautiful rosewood. Still got plenty of fret. Those frets will probably never wear out. Um, but yeah, the string's rotted. The string's rotted off that thing. It's got a couple of dings and chips, so maybe I'll work on on the finish. I mean, uh, beautiful, beautiful, like beautiful rosewood. I don't know if you guys are catching all this. And then if you can see the wool hangers that I'm making. I got the red. The light color, there's the white. I made all but the first one with the base, one, two, three, four. They're not, they're just prototypes. They're not clean, they're not pretty. But look at the back of this bitch. Look at that. You see that? Tiger flame. Talking from back in the day. Couple of little chip and dips, we'll fix that. Side, it runs all around the sides. All right, I got the electronics. I could even change, easy right there, bickety bam. Put a tuner or whatever. This is all the rage these days. Uh, doesn't want to go there. Two acoustics too close to each other. It looks like it's going to fight with the Alvarez. So Vantage from Korea. $300. I had to change the machine heads, the tuning machines. But uh, I did. And it's a great guitar. It's old now. It's 30 years. I haven't even played it in 15 years. Okay. So Alvarez. You can see... The strings are off, the bridge pins are out. I borrowed the bridge. Uh, I mean, the saddle, saddle's out. I gotta get a new saddle. We're gonna try to get a tusk saddle. And the nut looks pretty good, but maybe I'll get a tusk nut to match. And uh, yeah, we might have to do some work on the body of the Alvarez. I'm grabbing from my straight edge people. Let's see the moment of truth here. Yeah, major belly bulge. Major belly bulge. No dip. It's flat in the front of the bridge. Perfectly flat. It's bulging up the back. So a little bulge in the back. Uh, yeah. We'll look inside and we'll see the truss rods, I mean the support beams or whatever, and uh, see what needs to be done. All right, I think I've been trying to sign off for 10 minutes now. I'm going to look inside this guitar and we'll just keep it moving. I'll give you the update. Peace and love, people. Till the next time.